Hi, I'm Larry Jordan from Hollywood Reinvented. Today we're at Airflex Corporation in Burbank, California, and we're speaking with Michael Bravin, who is VP of Market Development. And we're here with a very, very revolutionary product, uh, another, another product that's going to shake up the movie industry pretty big time, uh, the Aerie Alexa. Thanks for uh, meeting with us oh, today, thanks Michael. Thanks for coming down. So um, I want to get right into it. Uh, let's give everybody an overview of the camera specs, for example. Okay. Well, let me uh, let me kind of go overview of the camera. The Alexa is a um, CMOS uses a CMOS imager, and it's a 3.5K um, sensor, which means that it has three and a half thousand pixels across uh, horizontally. Uh, we use what's called a Bayer imager. And that's a, it's a way of encoding the video so that you can get RGB video out of it using a single plane instead of a, a red, green, and blue sensor. So it's a single sensor that captures red, green, and blue information. And it captures it in a matrix. And that matrix gets decoded inside the camera to give us um, 1080p video outputs out the back of the camera and also to the, the DTE ProRes recorder. We also have the ability to take the raw data off the sensor and record it onto a hard drive recorder like a Codex or an S2. So that's the imaging portion of the camera. Uh, the recording and video portion of the camera, like I said, we have um, the ability to do single link or dual link HDSDI video out. We have a monitor out that can duplicate what you see in the viewfinder or can be clean for recording. And we have the DTE recorder, which we'll talk about in a little bit later. Um, the, the main part of the camera is the center section. And that, this is where the electronics and the sensor is, is uh, held. And it's completely sealed environmentally. The sensor part of the camera has a, a cooling mechanism that keeps the sensor at uh, 32 degrees centigrade all the time. And the way we do that is we seal all of the electronics and we have heat pipes that go down the camera to the back. And the back section of the camera is a chimney. And the heat is ex exhausted into a radiator here and air is pulled from the bottom of the camera out the top of the camera. So that's how we cool the camera. In terms of uh, the operation of the camera, it's, a, it's 16 by 9. Uh, size uh, sensor, Super 35, three perf size. So it works with all the 35 millimeter lenses and all of the 35 millimeter camera accessories that we have, including map boxes, follow focuses, and the wide variety of lenses that are available for uh, PL mount cameras. We also can uh, change the lens mount out for a Nikon, Canon, or Panavision mount, so people can use those lenses. And one of the big innovations in the camera was uh, the viewfinder, because all of our cameras up until now have used a mechanical uh, spinning mirror shutter and an optical viewfinder. And one of the challenges for this camera was to build a viewfinder that as closely duplicated the visual experience when you look through the eyepiece of an electronic viewfinder and an optical viewfinder in one unit. So we have the EVF for this Alexa that uses uh, LED backlighting so that we can keep red, green, and blue light so that we can keep a, a constant white light source, a high um, refresh rate display panel so that you get nice, crisp, clean, sharp, bright pictures, and uh, very, very, very little delay between what you see in the viewfinder and what's going on in the camera. So it's less than a frame. And it's one of the problems in the past with electronic viewfinders is that there's a difference in time between what you see because of the processing. There's a little bit of latency. Yeah. So this is a very low latency, high refresh rate, very bright viewfinder. Um, ergonomically, the camera is very well balanced to fit on the shoulder. We have a shoulder. Um, cut out in the bottom of the camera and a shoulder pad for it. So it fits really nicely on the operator's shoulder if you're using it in a handheld configuration. And we have an extension eyepiece bracket and um, extension handle and longer cables and all kinds of accessories that go around the camera that make it work on a dolly, on a tripod, handheld, on a steady cam. You can mount the steady cam on the top, on the bottom. So that it's very versatile in terms of fitting into the existing production environment. So it, it, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. So basically, if you're, if you're going to shoot a movie and you're here in Hollywood, it'll work with any kind of standard uh, equipment that yeah, works yeah. with. It, it fits into the way that people do legacy. their work today. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. And because of the imaging technology that we have in the camera, it provides a very high performance electronic image that's very close to the images that you can capture with film. Well, that's a, that's a, a, pretty, a pretty bold statement. And, and a lot of people have been kind of you know, touting the death of film. Uh, we're not going to get into that right now. But um, a lot of people are saying this is, this is one of the closest uh, 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 comparisons to, to a film image. Yeah, I think um, I'm relatively new with Ari, but the thing that most uh, struck me when I saw the, the first demonstration of Alexa is that it's a camera that's designed and built by people who do film equipment. 
and the area scan and the area laser. So the, technolo the imaging technology and the mechanical expertise and the history of the company all came to play into the design and development of Alexa. So it's, for, for instance, the way that we handle um, dynamic range, we get 13 and a half stops of dynamic range. And what that means is that you have a wide range of exposure so that you can get detail in your highlights and detail in your shadow areas. And that means that it's a more versatile tool under a lot of different uh, shooting circumstances. Uh, in low light, it's very, very quiet, which means the noise floor is very low, so that you can shoot that dramatic scene with a, a couple talking by candlelight, and it's very naturalistic looking. It doesn't have grain or noise to it like you see in some other electronic cameras. Very low levels of noise and, and grain. Yeah. I've, I've seen some, uh, some stuff on the net. Uh, in fact, that was shot with candlelight, green screen, and then comped, and it, it really, I mean, it was obviously a, you know, a, a smaller resolution file, but it was beautiful. Yeah, well, this was that was actually the first project that was shot with Alexa. It was called Anonymous. It's the story of Shakespeare's life. And the DP, Anna Ferrister, her challenge was how do you pull a key when your foreground um, uh, subject is lit by candlelight? And they needed to do this because it's a period piece, and there right. wasn't a lot of electric lights back then. Right. So they needed to have candlelight or daylight. So the night scenes where they needed to, or inside the house scenes where they needed to do green screen, they needed to light by candlelight. And then they have these uh, lace collars um, on their costumes. So it, very fine detail with, with uh, candlelight for the foreground and being able to pull a green screen. And she was able to do it, and that's why they chose the camera for Anonymous. How'd you guys do it? How, well, how did, did you re-engineer the, uh, the CMOS sensor? No, the, the way we do it is, is it's what we call our airy imaging technology. And, and it's a combination of the, of the choice of materials that's used for the uh, filter that goes in front of the sensor, which filters out um, uh, infrared light and also passes only uh, a, a certain amount of high frequency information so that you don't get noise or moire or aliasing. And then we use, um, we're very careful about the color dyes that we use in front of each of the pixels because in the Bayer um, mask, it's a checkerboard of red, green, and blue um, pixels. So the color of the dye that we use, it's very important to match that with the filter that goes in front. And then the software that we use for, for decoding the Bayer image, all of that together is area imaging technology. And that's how we're able to get really accurate colors. And that's how we're able to get really good bl uh, blue screen and green screen. We also do something to get our dynamic range. We use what's called dual gain architecture. And in simple layman's terms, it means that we take the signals that come off the sensor and we split it into two paths, one that goes through a high gain amplifier and one that goes through a low gain amplifier. Why do we do that? Well, the, the areas in the shadow need to be turned up. The volume needs to be turned up a lot, but we need to keep the noise low. So that's one amplifier. And the areas that are in the highlights, they don't have that much of an issue. They don't need to be turned up that much. So we take those two signals, we go through the two amplifiers, and then we convert to a digital image. And we do this all in real time. It's not like a high dynamic range wow. where you do multiple exposures. And that's how we're able to get the large range with the low noise, and with the area imaging technology, the really good solid color, good skin tones, and good blue, sc blue screen and green screen. It sounds really analogous to, to still HDR uh, technology where you you know would shoot something at high ranges, but it's mm -hmm. but it's real time. Yeah, I mean the bi the difference is that with HDR you take multiple exposures, and what we're doing is we're taking the same exposure, but we're processing it in two, two different, different paths. Yeah, very cool. So, Michael, tell me a little bit about Aries Imaging Technology. Okay. Oh, well, you mean specifically the AIT? What that is is that's the way that we take the the light from the front of the from the front of the filter in front of the sensor through the process that we go through. So we have a the color um, band pass filter that passes just the range of color that we see and filters out infrared light and a lot of the high frequency information is specially selected and formulated. We use, um, we use specially selected and formulated color dyes in front of each of the pixels. And then we use uh, a software um, demosaic or decoding software for the Bayer Imager. And the three of them together allow us to get a wide range of color, really accurate color, good skin tones, and good blue screen and green screen. Tell me about your, your anamorphic and, and film look uh, features. Well, it, we, have, we announced three models of the Alexa. And the first two models, the EV with the electronic viewfinder, use a, um, this, they all use the same sensor. But in order to keep the price and the processing down on the lower price cameras, we only use a 3-perf Super 35 version masked out of the center of the sensor. In the OV camera, which is the high-end camera with the optical viewfinder, we'll use the full 4.3. So to do anamorphic photography with these cameras, you'd use a, 
uh, some third-party lenses that that are made by um, Hawk that have a, a squeeze for 133 so that you can do anamorphic. But the true anamorphic look comes from the 43 imager and standard anamorphic lenses, which do a two to one squeeze. So on the on the uh, OV version of the camera, you'll be able to use standard anamorphic lenses. On this version of the camera, you would use the 133 squeeze lenses.